Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make the sound of your synth a little bit more interesting by detuning. The first thing we need to understand is the phase. The phase is for two waves of the same frequency when they are in sync or not in sync with each other. So when two or more waves are in sync, we call them to be in phase. And you can see here that they go up and down at the same time. In our next example, they are not in sync and they are what we call not in phase. So that's for waves of the same frequency. Now I'm going to show you in InGen two scene waves that are almost of the same frequency. And what happens is that one will catch up with the other and for a short amount of time it will look like they are in sync or that they are in phase. So in our example that is it right there. And you see now, after a few seconds, then they are not in sync again because one is pulsating a bit faster than the other. So that's this principle that we are going to use to make the sound of our synth more interesting. We are going to start back to a simple synth. One VCO into one VCA controlled by one envelope. And we are going to add a second VCO that we will mix with the first one. So we add our VCO, we add a mixer. This mixer we will use to mix our two VCOs together. So our two VCOs will be controlled by the same frequency coming from our keyboards. Then we plug the two VCOs into the mixer and we plug that mixer into the voltage control amplifier. So that's again a very simple synth. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to set up the two VCOs exactly the same way. So same waveform, same frequency, etc. And we can hear how it sounds now. So you see not a very interesting sound. The first thing we are going to do is play with the tuning control of our VCOs. The role of the tuning setting is to bring the frequency up or down by a certain amount. By slightly changing the tuning, we can make the sound much more interesting. You can hear the two VCOs going in and out of scene. That's what creates that rotating effect. Our next way to change the frequency is to play with the frequency modulation. And we are going to do that with the help of a low frequency oscillator. So we had our LFO and we are going to add another plugin that is called the amplitude modifier. The LFO's value goes from minus one to one. The amplitude modifier will change that because we want it to go from zero to one. Finally, I'm going to add a scope so that you can see the values of the LFO when it's affecting the sound of the VCO. So we plug everything together, the LFO into the amplitude modifier, the LFO into the scope, and the output of the LFO through the amplitude modifier driving the frequency modulation. Now we can hear that sound. So obviously that's just an example to show you what it does. It makes the frequency change up and down. Now let's make that a bit less extreme by changing the frequency of the LFO first. Now we are going to change the gain of the frequency modulation to be more subtle so that the LFO is just slightly changing the frequency of one of our VCO. So you can hear the effect is a bit more subtle. By slowing down our LFO, we can make the two VCO slowly arriving to the same frequency together. So you see, slowly, the frequency modulation arrives at zero. And now they are the same frequency and they start to change again.
The next plugin we are going to use is an analog driver. An analog driver is a simulator that tries to emulate the imperfection of an analog circuit. What it does in our case is it takes the frequency given by our keyboard and it will slightly change it randomly to other values. As in our previous example, I'm gonna plug the outputs of the analog driver into a scope to show you what it does. The analog driver has two sets of controls, the detuning and the drift. The detuning will change the inputs the same way for the two outputs. The drift will make the two outputs slightly drift from each other. So to make it clear as to what the analog driver does, it takes a signal and change it into two signals that are almost the same. So what I'm going to do now is push the settings of the analog driver so that you can see in the scope what it does. And you can see now our two outputs slightly being different and how it drives the two VCOs. So obviously those settings are not very musical, but they are a great example as to how they drive our VCOs. So now if we dial the settings down, we can make the effect more subtle. But it is still there and it gives a bit of life into our synth by uh, slightly changing or detuning the two frequencies of our two VCOs. So I hope this tutorial helped you to understand how detuning works, how you can use it in your synths, and give you an idea for your next creations. So thanks for listening and enjoy creating new synths!